Hello Internet, and welcome back to another episode of Dishing on Swishing. Today is a little different. In honor of March Madness and UCLA's solid tournament run they put together this year, we're doing a college player signature moves video. Today's player under the microscope, LeVar Ball. Wait, no, that isn't it. Nobody cares about a guy who's so hungry for the spotlight that he would exploit his own children's success like that. I'm not doing this for me. I got everything I want. You know what L.A. stands for, right? What? LeVar's awesome. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now you know where you're at. Not Lonzo? Lonzo's or, or Lamello? Yeah, all How of did them. you get away with all those names? Smile right did now. I win or lose? Right. <laughs> did I win or lose? Right. Anyways, today's player is actually Lonzo Ball. Now let's hop into the stats. To get a good perspective of Lonzo's stats, let's compare his freshman year stats with several other players. Jason Kidd, who is a decent style comparison, Chris Paul, who is basically the modern example of the point guard, and Giangelo Russell, who is also a decent size comparison. A couple observations that jump out right away are the similarity between Ball's kids and Paul's freshman stats. This doesn't guarantee that Ball will be a star, but it's a good sign. One thing to note is the alarmingly low free throw rate of Ball. But the fact that he makes an incredible 73% of his two-pointers generally makes up for this. But we'll go into why he shoots so well inside and that kind of thing later on. As good as his 42% three-point percentage looks, it's even better when you consider the amount of deep threes he takes. Free throw percentage is a bit of a concern with as good of a shooter as he is, but it is fixable with practice. Other than that, everything looks pretty solid to me. Ball is a unique and dynamic offensive player. He has a variety of NBA-ready moves and the confidence to go around with them. Let's break it down. His offensive game hasn't developed into a full scoring series yet, but the foundations are there. He is a very instincts-heavy player and takes whatever the defense gives him. He prefers to get out into the open court on fast breaks and attack an early offense where his athleticism and court vision are most useful. In the half court, his favorite spots on the floor are the deep perimeter and right corner. This gives him optimal space to see the floor and also his favorite cut down the baseline for the alley-oop. Lonzo's instinctual style of play means that he generally doesn't go through a scoring series or any kind of offensive series. This means that each of his main individual moves needs its own counter to be effective, even if it's just to simply reset or pass the ball around. So we'll take this into account as we go through his signature moves. Option one, open court or early the offense. Lonzo is most comfortable in the open court. He's extremely good at getting steals or rebounds to get the break started. He has great vision and is able to find the open man every time. The thing that impresses me the most about this part of his game is how efficiently he uses his dribbles. This is something that very few young players master, and even NBA players struggle with this sometimes. The reason this is so important for a point guard is because you have to be able to get the ball to where you want it to go as fast as possible. If you don't use your dribbles well, then you waste precious time waiting for the ball to get to your passing pocket. This helps reduce turnovers, and it also helps to get you where you want to go without wasted motion. A great example of an NBA player who uses this well is Ricky Rubio. This helps him to be one of the best passers in the NBA. Ball is also a great finisher. His ability to finish at full speed helps make him one of the most dangerous college players in the open court. This is something that will translate to the NBA very smoothly. Expect to see him thrive if he goes to a team that plays with pace. Another thing in this category that he is proficient at is early offense or the delayed fast break. This is where the team attacks when the defense is back but before it can get set. Lonzo generally likes to rub off a screen or pull out his drive or pull up game, which we'll go over more in a bit. Option 2, Catch and Shoot 3. This is where I expect his scoring series to develop because this is where his multiple counters all complement his main move. His driving skills are exemplary and he has great floor vision. This along with his ability as a cutter means that once this part of his game develops a bit more, he will be tough to stop. Ball is an extremely good shooter. He may have a super wonky shot, but he shoots it quick and makes it with consistency, so the form in this way is almost inconsequential. The places he likes to get this shot is the top of the key and the right corner. When he gets the shot at the top of the key, he really likes to shoot it with range. And when I say range, I mean like the next town over. For teams to counter this, they have to pressure him both on and off the ball. How he counters depends on where he is on the floor. If he's at the top of the key, then he's probably going to drive all the way to the rim or find an open man.
When he's pressured from the corner, he's going to cut straight to the rim for the alley-oop. Now let's talk about why Lonzo shoots 73% on two-pointers and why it could potentially be a problem. If Lonzo drives, he's either driving all the way to the rim or he is passing out. There's almost no in-between game. He has a floater, but he rarely uses that. But he doesn't have a good two-point pull-up, in large part because the hitch in his shot makes the gather extremely awkward. Now once he gets to the NBA, where there's a shot blocker around every corner, he won't always be able to get shots at the rim that he wants. So he's going to have to come up with some way to get the shot off over the reach of players like DeAndre Jordan and Hassan Whiteside. I have no doubt that he'll develop this, but it may take some time and creativity to find something that works. Option 3, running the offense. This is kind of a strange one to say is a signature move, but it is a very large part of Lonzo's game. The way he does this reminds me of when Rondo was on the Celtics and he would assist Hunt out of their offense. This is similar to what Ball does as he has very good vision and is also good at throwing the right pass to the right place at the right time. This is invaluable to a coach because you can trust your point guard to run the sets the way they were meant to be run and improvise if necessary. This is harder than it sounds as you have to be able to keep your head up and handle whatever pressure the defense throws at you while also knowing where all other nine players are on the court and what they're doing. You also have to be two steps ahead so you know where the ball needs to go next. When Rondo did this, teams would literally just zone him off because he couldn't shoot. But Ball is an excellent shooter so you always have to respect his shot. This will be extremely valuable to him at the next level, especially if he continues to improve. He needs to work on passing out of the pick and roll if he wants to succeed in the NBA though, as NBA offenses are centered around the pick and roll almost exclusively sometimes. And Ball struggles sometimes to make the right play as most young players do, so it's not too much of a concern yet. His counter move to this is his killer step back. He maybe relies on this counter a little bit too much sometimes as he gets like antsy or impatient, but he still has great composure for such a young player. Conclusion Lonzo is a potential number one overall pick in the draft. His freshman numbers line up favorably with some great players, and with some improvement, he could have a very bright future. As an NBA team, I would be a little worried about his dad and the team drama that he could potentially cause because he can't keep his mouth shut and has no filter. But at least on the surface, Lonzo seems like a good kid, so that could alleviate some concern. Expect him to go at least top three in the draft and to have a long career ahead of him. Now it's time for the post-game interview. What current star in the NBA did you like watching the most in college? For me, it was Gordon Hayward for Butler. That was one of the most memorable tournament runs of all time for me. But I want to hear your favorites in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the video. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome. Glad to have you aboard. You can look forward to more NBA and college coverage in the future. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you next time.